Hello and welcome. Ukrainian forces achieve additional successes in their counteroffensive. One of them is the crossing of the Dnipro close to Kherson. In this video, we are going to talk about what actually happened there and what are the prospects the Ukrainians can achieve with that, as well as more information about Prigozhin and Wagner. What is their future? We'll talk about this as well in this situational picture. We'll start off with the situation around Bakhmut. The Ukrainians have now pushed back the Russians here in this area close south of Bakhmut. There is a canal here going along that along that line in the north north south direction. The Russians so far still had a bridgehead on the western side. The Ukrainians have now managed to push it in completely. So the whole western bank of this canal is now under their control. There was also further fighting around Avdivka here in the south. The Ukrainians achieved some local successes. But the bigger news are around here in the Velika Novosilka region. Rivnopil has been liberated. We see them here with a picture. It's confirmed by the Russians as well. The Ukrainians are preparing to push in the direction of Priutne as well and fighting is continuing here but the Ukrainian side has liberated another town. The bigger news though is probably the crossing of the Dnipro which is now being confirmed. The Ukrainians have crossed close to the uh, to the bridge of the these former Antonivsky bridge. We see here a Russian BTR-82 uh, IFV, wheeled IFV uh, closing in. He, it is currently doing suppressive fire with its 30 millimeter cannon to the other side and on that side it's it's closing in to evacuate Russian soldiers that are withdrawing. The Russians so far say, um, so far the talking was about roughly 50 Ukrainian soldiers. The latest message I have from Russian mill bloggers is that now they think it's 70 and they say the Ukrainians consistently bring in reinforcements and they also bring the first artillery pieces, probably mortars, but still they are reinforced that position there and gaining a foothold. Now, what does that mean? The thing is, while we have uh, that happening here and we will see it turn around, I could actually zoom a little forward. You see it here and then you see it picking up a group of Russian soldiers. They seem to be carrying a wounded man. Uh, while while this is a clear crossing of the river Dnipro, there is still one river of roughly 90 to 100 meter width in front of the of the if we call it mainland. So while this is clearly a river crossing, while this is clearly establishing a bridgehead by all means of its terminology, by by whatever we want to classify it with. It's not the breakthrough that will lead to the collapse of the of the Russian front there, at least not yet. And it, here we see, by the way, the Ukrainians shooting back from the other side of the river, probably with a BMP-2 themselves. So while wh what we were talking about is this, this situation here, this was exactly here it happened. These small towns, these Dutchers are now liberated. The Ukrainians are advancing somewhere here in the forested area, but the big thing will be the conquer that is still um, basically turning all of this here into an island. As you can see, the water is going completely around it, so they have not had a foothold. There were rumors that they brought several tanks. I have not seen visual proof of that yet. It might be true. I just think it's unlikely. This means that they are pushing in this direction and thus obviously threatening the lines of communication between Crimea and Melitopol, but not yet. The, there's a Russian mill blogger who made a video and said that the uh, the units that were stationed there to guard it got flooded with the destruction of the Kachovka Dam. They lost a lot of their equipment and were immediately redeployed to Saporizhia to reinforce the positions here against the Ukrainian counteroffensive. They were replaced by mobics, so by mobilized personnel, badly equipped, badly trained. They didn't have night vision devices, which seems to in imply that the Ukrainians crossed the river at night and thus use their advantage of being having night vision devices for themselves. Um, this is now creating pressure there and it will lead to, to it 
the question is how the Russians will react. This first, this fixes Russian troops there, but the the for the Ukrainians, it's basically if they manage to stay there, it's a good result no matter what, because either the Russians will be forced to bring in reinforcements to make sure this bridgehead is not being widened. That will mean that those reserves that barely are in existence anymore as Prigozhin has shown us with his thunder run towards Moscow that those reserves are either going to be deployed and thus no longer be able to help along Saporizhia or Donetsk or it means that Ukraine might simply slowly push forward until they actually manage to cross the the river here into Oleshki. Uh, it seems unlikely to me that this is going to happen anytime soon, but at least they have the they increase the option to this. And this time we are no longer talking about some swamp land. We're actually talking about properly paved uh, areas, as we can see here. This is something where you can, if you manage to bring a tank, it doesn't get stuck. So while we are nowhere close to, to having a breakout here and a rush towards the Crimea to the Perikop, uh, uh, um, what is it called? Straight? Not straight. Isthmus to the Perikop Isthmus. While we are nowhere close to this yet, it's uh, still a, a powerful sign and a threat to the Russian positions. Because while the Russians can surely contain it, they will have. They will. They are forced to do that now, and that takes forces they can't use anywhere else. This was the the information here. We also have a video of the Russians shelling it. Now they are trying to obviously wipe it out. We see it here. It's uh, multiple launch rocket systems. According to themselves, they are using Grad as well as Tos One thermobaric launchers against it. Then we see this is supposedly showing a shelling of that position that we just saw. And then you see on the horizon that they used uh, incendiary ammunition as well, as you can see it go down here. So they are trying to suppress it and destroy that bridgehead with artillery as of now. Artillery that uses ammunition and that has to be there and can't be somewhere else. We have more information about Wagner. Wagner is a Prigozhin now has um, given a statement. He said that the Ministry of Defense declared on the 10th of June that they are going to um, basically delete Wagner, stop its existence by forcing them to join the Ministry of Defense. On the 1st of July, Wagner would have been disbanded. Only 2% of Wagner's members, according to Prigozhin, were willing to sign a contract with the Ministry of Defense. So almost everyone didn't want to, that would have meant that the combat power, the effectiveness of Wagner would have been lost to the Russian side. The, the plan, the intention was to go to Rostov and Don here in the south on the 30s of June, so before Wagner is disbanded, to hand over all the heavy equipment as a demonstration, as a sign. This is what we are giving up, this is what you're losing. But then the Russian military shelled the, the positions of Wagner with rockets, as the video claimed. Uh, Prigozhin claims 30 Wagner mercenaries died, so, so he was forced to do his march of justice towards Moscow to, to shine light on the problem that was there. He insists that it was a protest, not a coup d'etat, not the attempt of a coup d'etat. He wanted to, to get gain attention for the problem. He said that they achieved 780 kilometers of advance during that uh, march for justice. Not a single person supposedly died on the ground, even though there were some wounded. But of course, some, some pilots died. And that is, according to him, that is really sad. 200 kilometers in front of Moscow, the advance was stopped to stop a bloodbath. And um, Lukashenko's initiative that helped all of this allowed Wagner to continue his, its existence. The funny thing is that we have here, and look at his face, we have Semyon Pegov, who is here. He talked to uh, to um, Prigozhin, and I let you read it. And he seems to have given him the idea. You're not being given more ammo because you might turn your guns on Moscow, storm the Kremlin. The, these kind of concerns, how unfounded are they? Whether we'll march on Moscow? Well, their justification is that Wagner PMC have reached a certain autonomy. Vigoshin has certain political ambitions. He can talk his he can take his private army, turn it around and usurp power in Russia. About marching to Moscow, it's an interesting thought, but we haven't thought about it. I wasn't suggesting to you. You you do I wasn't suggesting you do. Now if you looked at his face, to me that was the sign of surprise. Like hmm. 
it felt to me at least like this. So we might have actually seen Semyon Pegov, the founder of Vorgonzo, to have given Prigozhin the idea here to actually do that, which I think is 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 kind of impressive. Um, Putin, though, had had a speech yesterday, which was announced, and everyone expected something really big, and he basically just said, "I'm strong, Russia strong, traitors will be punished." So complete waste of time to watch those six minutes but he said that um he said that the the culprits will be punished the those who led that rebellion but at the same time a few hours later it says that the fsb uh, did the investigation and everyone who started that mutiny stopped it has no more intention to do it so they dropped the charges so much about him getting punishing those well we'll see if whether they'll have some spicy tea in the future or fall out of a window but um he also putin also talked about blackmail and uh, by by saying that he made clear that prigozhin tried to blackmail him to release gerasimov and shoigu and that will basically not leave him any choice but to leave the two of them in office which might probably be good news for your Ukraine because so far they haven't really shined with their performance but by if he was to to replace them he would basically show Russia that Prigozhin was right and that's not th something he can afford still though the Russian mill bloggers were initially uh, speculating who might replace them but by now it seems the speculations are more at the deputy level now heads of departments etc that might be replaced so there might be some change but Shoigu and Garasimov seem to be safe and they are already had public appearances again so it seems neither of them is going to be replaced at least as of now uh, Lavrov the foreign minister of Russia said that Wagner will continue to be active in Mali and the Central African Republic um, that was to be expected that the usage of them would continue the interesting part is also that Putin said that v Wagner was mostly financed by the Russian government. That would mean that he officially announces that this uh, plausible deniability is over. And that can have some implications for the future because Wagner was designated a criminal organization or even a terrorist organization by a lot of institutions and countries. And now by by uh, the Russian government taking responsibility by claiming they financed it, by saying they financed it. They basically officially claimed responsibility and that might lead to some repercussions towards the Russian government and the Russian state in the future when it comes to crimes committed by Wagner in the past. We also have um, from Belorussia, we now have the, the news that there is a camp in construction for 8,000 men. 200 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. That's going to be for Wagner because Putin said the Wagner fighters can either uh, join Prigozhin in Belorussia, they can go home, basically leave military service, or they can sign with the Ministry of Defense. And at least in Belorussia, the preparations are, the expectations are that 8,000 of those, at least 8,000 might follow, but more might, more of those camps might happen. The information is also Wagner will be allowed to recruit in Belorussia. What that will lead to, obviously, there's is the wildest speculation whether Wagner is going to support Lukashenko to get to reduce Russian influence whether Wagner is there to take over power from Lukashenko to help faster integration you can imagine the speculations are running wild what we can say though 200 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border clearly means there is no imminent threat of a Wagner invasion into Ukraine uh, a thunder run towards Moscow where you don't where you aren't in combat and can just refuel from gas stations is one thing, but to do a combat operations into the Ukrainian defensive lines ha needs preparation, it needs hospitals, it needs supply dumps, those have to be filled. All of this takes weeks in preparation as it would be constant combat, thus constant need for medical supplies, for medical services, for weapons, for ammunition, and all of this has to be prepared so Ukraine will have ample time to see a virus invasion coming from Belorussia, which seems unlikely that this is at least something going to that is going to happen in the near future. Still, though, the, the other information was that Wagner will hand over its heavy weaponry to the Ministry of Defense. So I guess the T-90M that we saw in the Wagner column, as well as their air defense systems, will be handed over, as well as the artillery, will be handed over to the Ministry of Defense. If that is true, then Wagner will be mostly light infantry from now on. That was it already from me for now. If you like the support, please hit the thumbs up button. That really helps with the algorithm. What do you think Wagner will do in... 
in uh, Belarus, leave a comment to give us an idea what you think. That also helps with the algorithm. And if you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. This channel is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much for everyone already supporting this. And that's it for me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.